The following program was recorded at ARC Advisory Group's annual World Industry Forum in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome Editor-in-Chief of Supply Chain Brain, Russell Goodman. Hello. Interoperability for the process industries. Joining us to explore that topic is Ken Adamson, Vice President, Electrical, Piping, and Plant Products at Bentley Systems. Ken, welcome. Thank you, Russell. Ken, first uh, question, uh, for any viewer that's not entirely familiar with Bentley Systems, what does it do? Well, we, we simply say we are a software company for infrastructure uh, projects, whether it's from a civil geospatial building side all the way through to uh, plant, which is the main area we're going to be talking about today. What would you say then are the key market dynamics that are driving Bentley's software development in the process industries? Well, we see two main forces at play today. We have the emerging economies, the BRIC countries, expanding on new infrastructure, uh, including in the plant area, large, uh, complex uh, projects being executed on a worldwide basis and delivered into those countries, combined with uh, the need to maintain and, and, and rejuvenate existing assets that uh, are used in North America, European uh, markets. So we, we're seeing two somewhat conflicting requirements, one in terms of new build and the other in maintaining and extending life of uh, existing assets. I would imagine this next question, uh, the, the answer to it will be something that many viewers are going to be keen to hear. What are the key pain points that you feel you can solve for users? Well, I think some of the, there's various pain points that we look at uh, uh, solving. One is just the overall uh, ease of use of our products. And by ease of use, we're talking about not just kind of WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get type uh, interaction. And we have very complicated or complex uh, uh, problems to solve. And, and part of that is to also understand, to make the ease of use problem, we need to understand the types of components and items we're dealing with and put in the appropriate behaviors around those types of objects. So for example, in a pipe, there's certain expectations as to what a pipe should be able to do and what you shouldn't be able to do with a pipe. So building that into the software makes it more uh, easier to use. This deals with uh, two basic issues. One is in the, on the new builds where you're dealing with uh, uh, you know, new countries might not have had all the, the background and experience that we've had in the, in the Western uh, world in terms of those experiences. So to make it easier to bring in and train new people. At the same time within uh, uh, the North America, we've got a retiring and aging workforce. We need to be able to also bring in and approach the new generation. So the ease of use is more than just simply the kind of user interface. It's actually the interaction and the, and the behavior of how, uh, how we do the modeling. So this is kind of one uh, uh, challenge. The second is uh, what we refer to as uh, interoperability in a kind of general sense, which is we need to be respectful of the fact there's lots of existing application content and data out there today. So how do we marry together new concepts, new techniques, new approaches with this, this legacy of information that we have to deal with? So being able to combine uh, new with the old. We can't throw out uh, uh, everything that we've done in the past. We want to embrace that and how do we reuse it within the existing environment. So, so interoperability, part of that challenge is how to, to bring forward the legacy of what we have and make the best use of that and, and reutilize that into the future. Um, and so those are kind of two of the main uh, interactions. Uh, I think the, 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 the third area is to do with what we call in general scalability. We are trying to address uh, both small organizations, um, both working on their own projects, as well as within a larger context of a global distributed environment. So with these mega projects, you're combining uh, more than one organization together in a, in a mixed environment. How do you address both dealing with an individual contributor or a small organization that might be a, a, a local uh, a content uh, uh, provider for that uh, area, as well as the, the, the large uh, EPC organization, and how do you embrace 
how do you scale from simply you know, one or two or, uh, person organization to a large you know, 2,000, 5,000 person organization and how do you inter, uh, integrate those between those two environments? That's another uh, big challenge. How do we scale and, and approach that uh, and deliver across that, uh, that wide range of diversity of, of user needs and sophistication of their IT infrastructures, et cetera? Uh, not all users are having an IT professional in the back room that can help them out. So how do you deal with that distributed nature of the work, the, the level of expectation of performance on the software, as well as level of expectation of, of uh, administration around those software systems? So that's a, a, another main uh, area that we look at. You know, you mentioned delivery. And I know at Bentley you talk about open information. Question is, how do you deliver that? How do you provide that? Walk the viewer through that. Well, there's multiple aspects to uh, to that. We we have industry standards that uh, in various uh, different industries that we are uh, we use. In the case of the plant industry, the primary one is ISO 15926, but we're also dealing with in the building industry. We use IFC 2x3. Uh, that's used, as well as, of course, your de facto uh, standards, uh, DWG, uh, PDF, uh, or on DGN format. So we have to 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 deal with both uh, uh, compliance to an industry standard as well as dealing with the de facto. And again, it's a, about bridging those gaps. In terms of the the actual industry standards, we're a big proponent of supporting those standards and we worked actively with those standards or organizations to help uh, develop and enhance and, and implement uh, those standards. So we're one of the first companies to implement uh, ISO 15926 in, in the case of uh, uh, our product open plant. We've used that as the native uh, format that we use within that system. So rather than using a proprietary format within our own technology, we are using the industry standard as, a, as the foundation block for building our own solutions on, on top of that uh, uh, standard. So we, we're, we want to promote the use of, of those standards. We see it as, uh, uh, as kind of our duty uh, to the industry at large to be a good corporate citizen to make sure that that information can be used elsewhere because we're not the, the sole custodian of information. We need to be able to make it accessible to others you know, across the whole of the, the asset life, uh, life cycle. If I could ask you to step back for just a moment, take your salesman's hat off and be as dispassionate about this as you can. Yet, what would you say are the top two or three strengths that you feel differentiate Bentley Systems from your competitors? Um, certainly, I think our breadth of our solution, and because of that breadth of solution, I think our, our awareness of the issues of around interoperability kind of bring to the fore. It's, it, we feel it directly ourselves because we are looking at uh, the whole of the what we call you know infrastructure uh, aspects from from uh, uh, geospatial to civil to building uh, into a plant design or electrical design area. So, so we experience it ourselves internally, and because of that, I think we internalize that and look at how we, we provide a solution. Uh, so just our scope of how we go about approaching problems and that awareness of, of the overall, you know, the fact that we're just a piece, uh, a custodian for a period of time, and then it moves on to somebody else that's going to maintain it. So having that awareness, I think, differentiates us from, from much of our competition. I think the second is, is actually on the business Business and how we deliver our software to, to businesses uh, is actually a big differentiator. We provide various mechanisms for users to access our software. We provide what we call subscription programs where for a single discipline uh, uh, domain expert, we provide all the software they need for, for one price so there's no uh, issue in terms of have I got the right package in place. We provide a, a comprehensive suite of solutions for a single price. Mm -hmm. We provide a license exchange mechanism where you know, as an organization grows and changes, the requirements for software may grow and change. So you can have a, we have a kind of buyback program where we'll give you uh, the credit and, and you can buy and, and, and use other software as it, as it best fits your your uh, individual pro uh, company need. And then 
then thirdly, as part of that, uh, we provide for enterprise solutions, a kind of all-you-can-eat uh, uh, type of pricing where you basically pay for, for what you actually use. So through the business uh, execution aspects and the pricing, we're trying to deliver the value uh, and with new innovative ways in terms of the business, uh, business value for, for using the software. So I think those are two kind of our main, I think, differentiators from how we'd point to for Bentley and for or other organizations. Well, imagine, if you will, what the viewer is saying. Uh, I understand this is what sets you apart. So tell me now how those differentiators are going to provide me with gains, with achievements. What are the largest gains and achievements that your user is going to get from partnering with Bentley? Well, the gains are, are clearly in, in what our products do. I mean, we, we're providing value in the products in terms of the pricing, but also value in, in what they, they do for the user in terms of their manipulation, whether it's a creation or a creation application, or whether we're actually manipulating the information uh, for further use. So, so obviously, we co concentrate on providing the functionality to deliver value. From our, our ease of use and, and understanding what's the most appropriate information to deliver to the user, I think that also talks to our interoperability, is we're, you're also focusing on delivering the right information to the right person at the right time and in and, and the format that they want to see it in. So uh, the fact that we're looking at a design application might be fine if you're in the design world, but if I'm in the operations world, that's too heavy, there's too much information, it's not particularly useful, all that information useful at the point of time you need it. So how to make that information available in a format that can be easily consumed and quickly accessed is, is one of the other areas where by having an integrated environment and looking at those integrated products, we can deliver that uh, in a timely basis. And then providing the kind of uh, uh, approach to legacy uh, information where, you know, we kind of, you know, no man left behind uh, type approach. We want to be able to bring forward that legacy, uh, dealing with uh, the de facto standards, while at the same time having the vision to, to look towards the future, look at what's going on in the technology industries, the IT industries, and how do we embrace those without, without sacrificing all that's come um, before us uh, and to bring that forward. So, so we're looking at innovative ways that we can incorporate uh, the new technologies and yet combine it uh, uh, with what we've been doing. So, for example, in our open plan products, we deal with not only, which is based on a 1596 standard, it's not only that it's, it's exclusive, we've also brought forward data from our existing applications, auto plant and plant space, to also put it into a 1596 format so we can consume it within open plant. We've also done this with one of our competitors' products, uh, PDS uh, from Intergraph. We also bring that into open plant. So uh, it's not about simply you know, creating new products in isolation. We're looking at how we, we, we bring new products to the market that also embrace uh, what's come in the past and how do we move it all forward so you can aim for a higher level of execution and not be tied down to by, you know, if I've got a legacy system and I can't move forward. So, so this is a, a major issue. And it's the same issue for anybody maintaining infrastructure over a 30, 40, 50 year life cycle. They can't, they can't ignore the information. In fact, they don't want to. They need to reuse that information for how their you know, future business. So, so I think those things are really what uh, I think sets us apart and, and delivers value to the customer. Well, Ken, that's uh, interesting and valuable information. Thank you very much for sitting down with us today. Thank you, Russell. It was Ken Adamson, Bentley Systems. And he was speaking with us today about interoperability for the process industries. Thank you for watching.